let me uh, take a moment to introduce my, my boss, <laughs> the Dean of the School of Social Welfare. Um, he is our Dean, as I said, and also Professor Emeritus at the Minis uh, University of Minnesota School of Social Work and a founding director of Minnesota's uh, Center for uh, Against Violence and Abuse. And he is a leading expert on uh, domestic violence and his research examines adult uh, domestic violence on children and how system, social systems respond to that. Um, he has multiple appointments and many academic publications and books. But I will say, uh, from my part, uh, for the 18 months that he has been at the School of Social Welfare, he's really proved himself to be a leader with vision, and he's worked really tirelessly with all of us on, um, on really addressing the large social issues of our time, namely poverty, income inequality, and health disparity issues, and of course, aging. And, um, and also, lastly, how to get social work back to its roots, uh, to inspiring and supporting social movements. So I want to uh, welcome Dean Edelson, and please join me. My focus has been on children and domestic violence, but I am an aging social worker. <laughs> so I guess I have some relevance here. We all are all aging at the same rate right now. Um, and I was just in St. Paul, Minnesota yesterday, so I'm doing state capitals. And um, it's much warmer in this capital than in Minnesota right now. So let me just briefly talk about the School of Social Welfare has been uh, running a series of events called Grand Challenges in Social Work. And nationally, the American Academy of Social Work and Social Welfare is mounting a Grand Challenges uh, process where we try to define for the entire profession 10 to 14 Grand Challenges before us in the coming two, decade or two that so, where social work can have a major impact. And certainly one of those is the grand challenge of an aging society. Uh, this is an event that we held at our school uh, that An Andy Sharlack, who's here from our school, uh, moderated and developed. And uh, it was a very important, I think, event. We had over 100 people there. There was a lot of community interest in it. And so an aging society is, I, I, I do think it is one of our grand challenges before us as a society, and also before us as a profession. Uh, at that, and, and I just want to say that I, I think one of the major roles of CalSWEC, uh, which is part of our school, but also part of, it's a partnership across the state of 22 schools of social work in all of the counties, is to convene events like this. So I'm really happy that this is happening, not every five or six years, but now, hopefully, every year or at least every other year. I think this is, there's a two-year gap between the last one. Uh, but I think that's a really important role that CalSWIC serves in order to bring all of us together to think about the grand challenges and to think of it around, about these challenges from a profession, a social work professional point of view and how we can make a, a difference uh, to this grand challenge. One of the things that I argue for in um, my own field of domestic violence, and that overlaps a bit with aging because there is domestic violence among aging populations as well, is to think upstream. And upstream thinking is very popular. I don't know how many of you have ever heard the metaphor of bodies falling in the water and the stream and going down and people rescuing them before they go over the falls, but really you need to get upstream and prevent them from falling in to begin with. And upstream thinking is very popular right now in the medical field. So this is uh, Rishi Machandra's uh, new book from TED. TED is also publishing books, not just videos. Uh, but it, I heard him speak at the Prevention Institute in Oakland. And it was very interesting because essentially he's having this aha moment and his book is very popular, his TED talk is very popular. And what he's arguing is really that doctors need to become social workers. Uh, he just doesn't know it. He doesn't put a label to it. But he's saying, you know, we have to get out into the community. 
we have to look at housing issues, we have to look at income issues, we have to look at family supports, we need to coordinate care, we need to do prevention work. Uh, you know, these are all things that social workers have been doing, and I actually sort of confronted him at that talk, because he only mentioned social workers briefly once, but then when I asked him about social workers, he said, well, actually, the social worker is one of the most important people in our upstream thinking team uh, at his clinic. And I really do think that there's a huge role in this change in the Affordable Care Act, thinking about coordinated care, um, prevention, a variety of areas where social workers can really play a role, and certainly in the healthcare system, and it's not just the healthcare system, but aging is an important issue in the healthcare system, as well as in other areas of our society. So I prefer to think about full stream thinking, not upstream thinking but that we need to be there in the crisis. We need to be there providing those supports at the downstream end, but we also need to think of the full continuum of resources for a, the aging community. And, and when you're working with the aged, you're also working with their children and their grandchildren. When you're working with older people, it's not just about older people, it's about families and communities, and so I think it really takes multiple skills uh, beyond just knowing about an aging society, uh, uh, older people in our society. So we had Richard Adler as part of the Grand Challenge event, and I don't know how many of you know him, Institute for the Future, but he's Silicon Valley, he's got an interesting uh, background. But he raised seven reinventions that he thinks we need to uh, address as we address an aging society. And, um, so I totally ripped these off from Richard um, and quoting him. But we need to reinvent health care. We need to reinvent aging services in the community. <coughs> Housing and long-term care needs a major rethinking of how we provide that. We need to think about community. What is community? And are the, you know the village concept that actually Andy Charlotte has worked a lot on uh, how, do, how does a social support network in the community, not just in the healthcare system, and not just in specialized housing, but out in, in the community where many older people are living? How do we reinvent and re-envision retirement? Retirement is changing. Retirement is, I think it's a real, everybody that I know that's retiring really isn't retiring. It's, it's a different, it's sort of like we have a new emerging adulthood uh, <laughs> stage of life in the 20s, we've added this new emerging adulthood stage of development. I think there is, uh, there are changing stages of development in aging uh, populations. And again, so that addresses that life stages, and then we really need to reinvent what is social work's role in all of these different areas. Not just in healthcare, which is a big piece of our attention right now because of the Affordable Care Act, but in many other areas, as Richard Adler points out. Um, I think what I hope, and what I hope we're training at Berkeley, are social workers who will challenge conventional wisdom, who will not just take this what is current for granted and just provide what currently is there, but really are able to adapt to constant change, reinvent themselves, and reinvent the institutions that they are part of and that they staff. I think that's a very important challenge for us. And as you consider how do we train a workforce for a, an increasingly aging society, I, I want us to be sure that we give these social workers deep knowledge, deep skills with elderly or aging populations, ability to deliver on evidence-informed practice, that we have support for the practices we're using, but I don't want us to just be training functionaries who, who fill the current roles that are there, because we really do need to reinvent the roles that social workers serve right now. So as you plan today and think about a curriculum, I, want, I hope that you're thinking about the future and not the present, because the future will be very different, I believe. And I, uh, the last caveat is that we just shouldn't tr chase money because it's there and let the money shape what we're doing. We need to shape it from a sort of ped pedagogical point of view, from a social work point of view, what we think is needed and then convince others to support that rather than 
shaping ourselves to the money that's available. So with that, I'll end uh, full stream ahead, and uh, you're on the road starting now. And I look forward to Nora's talk and David's talk as well.